Welcome to a proof of the derivative of f of x equals arc secant x. We'll prove the derivative of arc secant x with respect to x equals one divided by the absolute value of x times the square root of the quantity x squared minus one. To begin, we'll let y equal arc secant x. So notice in this equation, x would be the secant function value and y would be the angle. And therefore, it follows that we can write the equation secant y equals x where the angle y would be on the closed interval from zero to pi and the angle could not be, and the angle cannot equal pi over two because secant is undefined at pi over two. If we write this equation as secant y equals x over one, since secant theta is equal to the ratio of the hypotenuse to the adjacent side of a right triangle, we can model angle y using a reference triangle. Though we do have to be careful though because notice how when the angle y is in the first quadrant, x would be positive, but when the angle y is in the second quadrant, x would be negative. So we need to be a little careful when we set up our triangle. So this is our angle y, because the ratio of the hypotenuse to the adjacent side would be equal to x, we might label the hypotenuse x and the adjacent side one, but because the hypotenuse of a reference triangle is always positive, we're going to label the hypotenuse the absolute value of x, and therefore if x is positive, the adjacent side here would be positive one, and if x is negative, we would use negative one on the adjacent side. Then using the Pythagorean theorem, we can determine that the opposite side would be the principal square root of the quantity x squared minus one. We know the opposite side of this reference triangle because the y coordinate is positive in the first and second quadrants. Using this triangle, since sine theta is equal to the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse, we can write sine y is equal to the square root of the quantity x squared minus one divided by the absolute value of x. And for cosine y, instead of using plus or minus one divided by the absolute value of x, because we know that secant y is equal to x, we know cosine y would be the reciprocal of x, which would be one over x. Again, here x can be positive or negative based upon the quadrant. And now for the next step in our proof, we'll differentiate both sides of this equation here with respect to x, which because we have an implicit equation requires implicit differentiation. So the derivative of secant y with respect to x is equal to secant y times tangent y times dy dx, and this is equal to the derivative of x with respect to x, which is equal to one. And now solving for dy dx, we would divide both sides by secant y tangent y, so we know dy dx is equal to one divided by secant y times tangent y. And because one over secant y is equal to cosine y, and one over tangent y is equal to cotangent y, we can write this as dy dx equals cosine y times cotangent y. And because cotangent y is equal to cosine y divided by sine y, we can write this product as cosine y over one times cosine y over one times one over sine y. And now performing substitution, we know cosine y is equal to one over x, so we have one over x times one over x, and then times the reciprocal of sine y. Well, if this is sine y, the reciprocal would be the absolute value of x divided by the square root of the quantity, x squared minus one. Now before we multiply, we can simplify. There's a common factor of x between the numerator and denominator, and we know the absolute value of x is always going to be positive, and x times x, which equals x squared, will also always be positive. So when we simplify out the common factor of x to assure the result is always positive, we write the remaining factor of x as the absolute value of x. And we have our proof. We have the derivative of arc secant x with respect to x equals one divided by the absolute value of x times the square root of the quantity x squared minus one. And notice how this derivative function value is always going to be positive regardless of whether x is positive or negative which means the slope of the tangent line is always going to be positive. F of x equals arc secant x is always increasing or monotonically increasing. And let's verify this graphically. So here's the graph of y equals arc secant x. Notice how anywhere where the function is differentiable, the slope of the tangent line would be positive. And the function is increasing over its entire domain. I hope you found this helpful.